Hello there, it's Andy Younes from FormServ once again. In this short how to an IBM i video set, we will be taking a look at the changes made in the Zen PHP world regarding IBM i. We'll take a look at installing what is now called Community PHP. We will then show you how to set up an Apache web instance that will serve a PHP application. It's exciting times in the PHP world on IBM i. Let us show you all about it. So, where did it all start for Zend and PHP on IBM i? Zend came to the IBM i in 2006. They provided Zend Server, which included the PHP runtime. They provided a free basic server license, as well as a chargeable enterprise and support options. Additionally, they also added an Eclipse IDE called Zend Studio. I wasn't a lover myself, but that's another story. And Zen DBI, a MariaDB MySQL implementation for IBM I, which basically allows you to store MySQL database in DB2 for I. So originally, very similar to IBM, Zen servers was installed as a licensed program, normally the last one on the list. And it was maintained by PTFs. So that's the old way, we can see I still have it installed on my box. I, along with many others, badgered IBM for more of an open PHP option. At this time, we had many open source languages available for us. Python, Node.js, etc, etc. Unlike the PHP offering we had, these languages had no commercial link. So why did we need the Zend PHP link? At the end of 2019, IBM and Zen came up with the goods. We now have native PHP on our box. A result. So how do we get native PHP on our box? The trick is to add the Zen repository to our yum repository list. Using a shell, type yum config manager and add the Zen repo. Then to check our repository list, use the command yum repo list. We can now see our Zend repo. If I go over to my shell, let me check the version of PHP I'm running. PHP minus V shows the version number. And PHP minus I shows me PHP info. Always a good check to see what's happening with PHP. Let us see this on the ACS package management. Go into the installed packages. Here we can see that PHP at version 7.3.1.2 and it installed it from the Zend repo. Let me check if there are any updates. Yeah, a slight update there, 7.3.1.3. I'll update it while we are here. Let me speed this up a bit. It's chugging through all the PHP packages. That's all done. And now we have PHP at version 7.3.1.3. All good to use. In fact, Zend have now removed the free basic one year support option. All support is now chargeable. So that's how we now use PHP on our IBM i. And now onto Apache. So how do we set up Apache to run our community PHP? It's a couple of steps we have to do, but not too difficult. The first thing we have to do is create a new Apache instance. Fire up the Apache admin browser by going to your IBM I on port 2001 stroke HTTP ADMIN. Be careful of the cases for that. The HTTP and A have to be in uppercase with the rest in lowercase. If this page comes up with an error, you might not have the HTTP admin instance running on your server. If this is the case from a 5250 session, run start TCP server, asterisk HTTP, prompt it, 
and then put in asterisk admin into the instance field. To create a new Apache instance, click on the create HTTP server in the top left hand window and follow the wizard through the create steps. I'll call my Apache instance comphp for community PHP. I bet you guessed that. Taking the rest of the defaults is fine here. I'm going to be using port 8099 and then we press next and next and next so now let me check so that's all done now let me check the instance is running by going to my server on port 8099 yep that's all looking good now we have to put in the configuration bits to the PHP in the Apache admin we use the edit configuration file down the bottom left panel to add the fast CGI support. This needs to be added near the top of the config. We need to add load module, send underscore enabler underscore module and point that to qsys.lib, qhttp server.lib and the program is qzfast.serviceprogram. And next we need to tell Apache that any PH pile should be executed by the fast CGI application handler. These are the lines we have to add here. Add type and add the handler. Hit apply then restart the instance. Give it a quick check. That's all looking good, it's still running. We are now going to create a config file to ensure that PHP is executed correctly. I'm going to use Microsoft's Visual Studio Code to achieve this. Take a look at our videos on Microsoft's Visual Studio Code if you haven't come across it before. In the config directory of our Apache instance, there should be the Apache config file called httpd.conf. We need to add a new file in there. In this config directory, we need to call it fastcgi.conf. And we have to add the following line. Server type is application x httpd-php. Command line then points to qopensys packages bin php-cgi. And then start processor equals one. And then we go back to the Apache admin to restart the server. That's still running, so that's looking good. Now back to VS Code to quickly write a PHP script to ensure that PHP is getting executed correctly. Just do a PHP info here, nothing special. And back to our browser, just to check everything is OK, we type in phpinfo.php. That's all looking good. Let me show you now a couple of additional steps to ensure PHP runs as optimally as possible. The first line we will add gzip compression to the pages we serve. Again, somewhere near the top of our config.apache file we add load module deflate module qsys.lib qhttp server.lib qzsrcore.service program and the add output filter by type deflate application x httpd-php application slash json text slash css application x javascript application javascript text.html i'll put these within our github repository i'll put our complete configuration in there so you will be able to find it later on save you typing this all out and the next line will allow our users to use older connections making things go faster we put a timeout value of there of three zero 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 Keep a live timeout to 30 and the hot backup is off. 
and we can now change the directory index line which will allow us to use index PHP before the index.html. We restart our server once again and back to our browser just to check everything is OK and back to Visual Studio Code to write an index.php file to test that we have everything correct. A quick echo statement will check PHP is being executed. It automatically saves for me. Back to the browser and take out the previous page. So it goes directly to the main index page. And yes, it executes our index.php script. And that's all we have to do to get our community PHP up and running on our IBM I. No need to use NServer anymore. What a result. Thank you, IBM. And that wraps up this quick video. Thank you for watching our How To on IBM My video set. I hope you found them useful. Keep checking our website, learning.formaserve.co.uk. We regularly add new ones. Stay safe and see you soon. Thank you.